This is the walkthrough video for assignment 4B. Now, the instructions in the class pack apply to the drawings that are in the class pack. And if you're doing the CAD class with me before we're doing the hand drawing, we will not be working on those assignments. So that means you're going to go over to Canvas and you're going to look at the assignments that I've loaded up for you. So assignment B12-4B. And here are the instructions that we need for this assignment. So we'll go to AutoCAD. We're going to start a brand new clean drawing, All right? And then just check out your screen. Make sure everything is set up correctly. For example, uh, do you have a little tiny baby command line like this? If you do, you need to enlarge it, pull it up, All right? Make sure there's at least three or four lines of text that you can read so we can work with some of these commands. On our status bar, do you have all the tools open? Let's see. Click on the hamburger, go down the list. If there's a check mark in front of all the tools, you know that they are all visible. Are there things turned on that you don't know how to use? Uh, if there are, turn them off. And then think about what do you plan on using? Are you going to use the grid? Maybe. Are you going to use snap mode? Definitely not. De like training wheels. Are you going to use ortho? Well, why not use polar? because if ortho is good, polar is better. Object snap tracking, probably. How about object snaps? Definitely. And then which object snaps are you going to be using, right? So pick ones that seem appropriate to whatever you're working on. And then we're working with lines that have line weight, so turn on the line weight display. Anything else that's turned on, if you're not sure what it does, turn it off. We need to go to the layer property manager, we're going to create several layers. Center. Object lines. Okay, and then we're going to assign their colors. Assign the line types. And we'll assign the line weights. All right, so drawing is all set up. Okay, now we're ready to go. I know we haven't drawn anything yet, but it is a good idea to save at the beginning rather than doing a lot of work and then maybe losing all that work because you never saved. So you have your B12 folder. This is an assignment and you're going to save it in this B12 folder with an appropriate name. So this is drawing B12 dash 4B dash your initials. If we take a look at what we are trying to create, we see a lot of arcs and circles, uh, but there are center lines too and center marks on those circles. So I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to set up a horizontal center line and then some vertical center lines to provide a skeleton for the drawing. All right, so over on the center layer, I'm going to and draw some lines. That'll be my horizontal line. And then he'll be my vertical line. And we can start with maybe some construction geometry. Um, that first large circle is a 1.25 radius, a one and a quarter radius. And then the second circle is a one and a half inch diameter. Okay, and now from here to the left, I can do some offsetting. It's two inches from the center of this circle to the center of the next arc. And then it's two and a half inches from the center of that arc to the next arc. And then it is seven inches from that circle to the very front of the figure. 
Okay, so you can adjust your center lines if you need to. The figure is also four and a half tall from the top to the bottom. So I will offset once again, uh, 2.25, two and a quarter, two and a quarter up, two and a quarter down. And if you want to, you can do some extending. So you have a little better idea of where things are supposed to go. I've got the two circles on the end. Next, I'm going to do a diameter one inch circle and then another diameter one inch circle right next to it. And then in the front, I've got a radius 1.25 circle. All right. So now what? It looks like a bunch of circles, right? How is that going to help us? Well, we're going to draw some lines and maybe a good snap to turn on at this point would be quadrant. So I'm going to connect the top of this circle to the top of that circle and the bottom of that circle to the bottom of this circle. And that's going to create my slot in the middle. I'm going to bring this line over from that quadrant and this line over from that quadrant. And that's going to carry the top and bottom line of this spanner. I'm going to draw a line from here up to here and from here over to here and from here to here and from here to there. Okay, we're taking shape here, looking good. I also need to make an arc. The arc rounds it off here and here. It's lined up with this circle here. So you can go to your center radius and do a one inch radius here and a one inch radius here. Okay, so that looks a little crazy, doesn't it? But look, it's got all of the parts that we need. Let's do some trimming. Trim this out and this out. Trim this and this and this and this. So there's the rounded end. There's the hole in the rounded end. Here's the slot. I'm going to trim off three quarters of this circle because I literally want this part. I'll trim off three quarters of that circle because I literally want that part. I only need half the circle here. I don't need those lines here. And last but not least, I'm going to knock the corners off with a little bit of a bevel, a chamfer. So I'll go to chamfer. Right now the distance on the chamfer is set to zero. And it says set it for half inch at 45 degrees. So uh, just between us, probably one of the most useful things that a teacher could have ever taught you in geometry. I'm going to try to show you now. And it's this. If you draw a square and you cut that square in half diagonally, you have created a 45 degree angle. So between that line and that line is 45. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways of making the chamfer if you know that. Now, if you didn't know that, try to lock that in your brain. That is a useful geometric construction to know. Uh, so if I know it's a half inch down and I want 45 degrees, it's also a half inch this way. So my two distances are going to be 40 uh, are going to be the same if I want 45. So we'll say give me distance, distance of 0.5 for distance one, distance of 0.5 for distance two, and then pick line one and line two. And there's your 45 degree angle. Now you could also tell it I want to give you a distance at an angle. So you can say angle. And then the first thing it asks isn't for the angle, it asks for the distance. So again, the distance is 0.5. The angle is 45. So pick line number one, and then line number two, and we get the same results. Okay, figure is done. So what do we really need to keep at this point? Some of these center lines are not necessary anymore. We can get rid of them. Some of them are a little too big. Um, some of them need to be trimmed back. So let's talk about what we want to keep. I think the center line going through the center is probably a smart one to keep. 
because it's symmetrical, right? The part is symmetrical. But do you remember the annotate tab has got some tools in it? So I'm going to set it back to the center layer. I'm going to say I want center marks and I want a center mark here and a center mark here and a center mark here. Okay, and then if we take away that first center line we had, right, we've got all of the center marks that we need. And we can actually drag them to make one long line and piggyback one on top of the other. Okay, and then it looks like a center line, even though it's made of a bunch of little center marks. All right, make those two kiss. Mwah, there we go. This is sticking out a little, a little. See, it sticks out a little bit past the edges, which is cool. Here, it should be pulled back a ways. You know, the center mark should not be touching the edge of the object. So here it's pulled back, where here, it can either be pulled back or pulled past the arc, just not on the arc. I'm going to keep mine a little past the arc because that's generally how it's done. But here, it's got to be dragged back. There we go. Over here, I got the same deal. It looks fine here. I'm going to drag it back here, and I'm going to drag it back here. All right. And figure is done ready to go. You can go in and measure the components if you wanted to to make sure they are the right size. Uh, you could put dimensions on things to make sure they are the correct size. Okay, Not a bad idea if you want to check your work to go in and do so. All right, add a border, add zero, zero. Send it out to point 10 comma 7.5. And if your figure needs to be moved to get it centered, that's fine. Doesn't have to be perfectly exactly dead in the middle. We can do something called close enough for hand grenades. There we go. And that looks good. Last step, some text. Put your name down in the bottom right corner. Stick that where you want it. And hit save one more time. And now the file is saved. Drawing 4B done.